The Diamondbacks are coming off a series win against the Reds. Although they currently sit at four and six, fourth place in the NL West, Eduardo Escobar has led the charge with a home run in each of the last four games. Opening day, though, was not the experience many wanted it to be. For a stadium that's known for its culinary concoctions, the concessions were making people crazy. 19,000 fans returned to Chase Field for the first time since September of 2019, and fans in attendance reported long wait times for concessions. The team announced they'll be offering free tickets to anyone who faced delays. While a homemade cloth mask may be convenient, they can become difficult to breathe through when sweating. Neck gaiters are a more comfortable option, but offer less protection. The KN95 is the most protective mask, but experts agree any mask is better than nothing at all. K1, oh man, he can hoop too. Take a look at this video. He's splashing threes and letting the Suns know he's ready whenever they are. I won't tell if you won't, but it looks like his foot was on the line for a few of those. How about a pool day at the W Hollywood in Los Angeles for Pac-12 Football Media Day? We've got head coach Herm Edwards, Jaden Daniels, and Chase Lucas all ready to get you prepped for the start of Sunnable football. Usually this time of year in preseason, there's plenty of unanswered questions surrounding this team. But this year, they've returned 20 of 22 possible starters. So in my opinion, I don't think there are many good questions. Instead, we've got some real questions. Hey, Coach, Zach Keenan, Devils Digest. Do you think practicing in these grossly hot temperatures now may provide a competitive edge later in the season? Oh, I, I think any time you can practice in, in conditions. Um... With the game on the line, is there anyone else that you would give the ball to but Remy Martin, especially on his senior night? The Sun Devils pick up a 77-74 to overtime win over the Washington State Cougars. Hi, everyone, and welcome into our post-game show. He's Hode Rubino. I'm Zach Keenan for DevilsDigest.com. And we said in our pregame that you expect the unexpected when it comes to the Territorial Cup, and nobody, including either of us, expected a 70-7 to win by the Sun Devils to take their fourth consecutive Territorial Cup. Injuries are the hardest part of this of this business, period. But you get so close to your guys, and, and I have such a profound amount of respect for my guys. But in particular, I have such a love and respect for Jermaine. At the beginning of fall camp, defensive line coach Robert Rodriguez was so enthusiastic about the depth that his position group will have this season. Hi everyone, Zach Keenan here for DevilsDigest.com and a week away from the start of the season, we've now got a couple questions about this defensive line. Suns guard Devin Booker made history again despite a loss to the San Antonio Spurs. The young star became just the ninth player under the age of 25 to reach 9,000 career points. He did it in the second quarter of Saturday's game. I know it's something easier said than done, but a positive attitude can make all the difference. I had the opportunity to meet one softball player who conquered her greatest challenge yet by turning the negative to positive. She's been a hot shot, a coyote, and now is a puma. Emily White has never had a more difficult season than this one. After last season was cut short, she's returned for one last ride. I said, well, what are you doing? She said, I had no idea she was still playing. She says, I'm playing second base at PVCC. And I'm like, I mean, I literally got tears in my eyes. And I was like, wow, okay. But her return to the field was emotional for more than one reason. We were just like camping up in Flagstaff. And it was like definitely a freak accident because we weren't doing anything crazy. We just hit like a bump in the road and then it shifted like the front end of the car, you know, over to the left side. Either way, we were going to flip. So I decided to correct it a little bit and roll into the mountain instead of off, which good thing we didn't because we would have, they said we would have died going off. The vehicle rolled three and a half times before Emily was ejected. I just didn't make my leg out in time and it just crushed me and kept going. When I woke up, I was just really confused at first because it's like, oh, you have to get like aware of what just happened. You were just looking down at your phone and then all of a sudden you're like on the ground trying to comprehend what was happening. Life takes us down many roads, but for Emily, as she learned on that fateful day in Munns Park, 
Life isn't about what happened in the past. She uses her positive thinking to drive her ahead on her road to recovery. She has had a smile on this, like, through everything that has happened. She's going to persevere. She's going to be resilient. Um, she's going to do it with this infectious smile. She's understanding right now that she's not able to be the athlete she was before this happened. But she's not going to let her de let it deter her from working her butt off and trying to get out there and getting as much playing time as she can. Armed with a positive attitude, a smile, and a blade, there's no match for Emily White. In Paradise Valley, Zach Keenan, Cronkite News. We could all use a helping hand. In times of need, the Arizona Derby Dames inspire others. If you talk to any skater that's been in roller derby, they inevitably have some type of story that says, oh, I was in a bad place in my life and I needed something good. And all of a sudden, roller derby ends up existing. You get sucked in by the roller derby community in like the best of ways. Eight competitive teams call the Dames Warehouse their home track. It's an opportunity for us to kind of leave everything that happened during our day at the door. We walk in and nothing else exists except for roller derby. But when the pandemic hit, the Dames closed the doors, suspended member dues, and hung up their skates for a full year. There's hundreds of people that depend on this community, and it would just be so extremely sad if we lost it. While their doors were closed, a new opportunity opened. The Derby Dames found a way to give back to the local community, all while promoting the sport that they love so much. On your lap, it's going on your lap. You're strong. Inspire, the nonprofit branch of the Dames, launched a mobile feeding service in areas where up to 98% of students qualify for reduced cost or free lunches. In the past year, they've served over 750 thousand free meals. You also get to learn so much about communities that you maybe live in, maybe you don't. As the track reopens and the team skates toward one million meals served, the Derby Dames mission remains the same. We did lose the ability to skate, but we didn't lose the ability to help our community. These dames continue to inspire, one way or another. In central Phoenix, Zach Keenan, Cronkite News.